Welcome back to Nuts and Bolts Torqued. It's time to overhaul the power system. And to do that, I'm going to make a whole bunch of thermoelectric generators, which I think I described how these worked previously. It, it, works, uh, it works by generating power based on the temperature differential by two different fluids that are side by side. So one side lava, the other side water, for example, will generate a certain amount of electricity because of the temperature difference between them. So let's just make a whole bunch. Um, I've got everything prepared. Oh, that's something else. So I'm going to need a whole bunch of LV wire coil. Full stack, nice. And with that, I'm going to have to make a bunch of copper coil blocks. Eight should be fine. Put that in here along with steel on top and a bunch of Constantan plates here. Uh, Constantan is made with... Equal mixture of nickel and copper. I didn't actually have much nickel. I think I used up almost all of my nickel just making a huge batch of these Constantan plates. But I had enough. And with that, we have eight thermoelectric generators. These are going to generate so much more power. Um, probably one or two of those is equal to what I'm making with the water wheel, so I'm going to have a lot more power. Also, I extended the path here little bit. This had all turned into grass, so got an excellent little path that leads up here. Still a couple spots that are still dirt, so I'm just waiting for those to transform before I make it completely into a path. And I finished the path over there by the farm, too. Right, now I need to find somewhere to put these. It's going to be kind of a dangerous area because there is going to be lava. So the potential fire, and um, it just feels like it should be kind of sealed in its own separate room probably underground, so I think I'm going to make an underground area somewhere. Why is this purple? Huh? I don't get it. Why? What if... What if I switch these? Now I don't remember which one is which. It doesn't matter which one you put there. It always ends up like that. Okay. There we go. I've got a nice big hole. Kind of on the beach. Uh, fairly near the water wheel. I'm going to line the whole thing with something that looks appropriately industrial. Whew, it's dark. Yeah, so let's make it look proper down there, and also create a staircase or, or a ladder or something to go down there and up. Alright, there's something I want to mess around with. Um, there's some blocks in Chisel called factory blocks that look really, really cool. The thing is, though, I haven't made them so far because they're relatively expensive. To make 32 of them, you need 4 iron ingots and 4 stone. And I'm not exactly overflowing with iron, but you know what? I'm just going to make some. Make like... Three stacks. Yeah, so let's see how these look. I think we can chisel them into... Uh, yeah, we can make them into all these different things. Like, even animated blocks that look like fans. Like exhaust fans. This is apparently a massive fan. It doesn't look like it. But yeah, we can make this look really industrial. Oh, I'm gonna have a lot of fun with this. Like, let's go with this for the entrance. I think it'll look pretty cool, kind of like a... sort of like a warning. If you enter this hole, things are gonna get hot. Uh, maybe I should word it differently. <laughs> that is the hole, by the way. It just can't make it go all the way down. But I was thinking something like just a ring around it. Oh, there's no walking noise? Ah, oh, dang, that's awkward. It sounds really cool when you place it down. But I guess dynamic surroundings, the kind of sound overhaul mod, doesn't have any walking sounds for it, I guess. Oh well. 
But yeah, that looks super cool. There. And something like this metal column. That's what this is, right? Yeah, metal column factory block. This will be where the stairs will go. I was looking at, or not stairs, sorry, ladder. I was looking at the different types of ladders, and there's a couple different varieties aside from just the basic Minecraft stone, um, wood ladder. There's the rusty ladder, which just would be like absolutely perfect for this. I would love to have it, but it looks like it's three iron ingots just to make a single piece of ladder. So I'm afraid that's too expensive. But I'm going to try the stone ladder, just made with stone rods, which is just cobblestone. Apparently from Tinker's Construct. Maybe look a little more industrial than wood. There. It's kind of cool. You know, I think I'm going to maybe raise this a little bit. It's kind of hard to get on the ladder when you have to sort of like fall down, so let's maybe do this. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Alright, let me put the rest of this shell into place. Got a little bit of a floor in. Uh, also, I just realized this thing is not even near centered. Um, I'm going to fix that. Maybe a little bit strange looking for a wall, but I'm trying to give some color to this place. I don't want it to all just be like rusty browns. Alright, I'm pretty much out of factory blocks though, so I'm actually going to have to go make a bunch more. Pretty cool looking. I just continue this pattern all the way up there, and then I use the ice 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 blocks for the top, which is similar to the wall, it's kind of a bluish color, but a little bit different looking. It's pretty cool looking. I'd like to try to add some other things though, like I want to try the animated blocks. What about the fans? I mean, it makes sense for this place to have cooling because it, there's going to be tons of lava down here, so I feel like it should be vented. Let's try this huge fan. What does this look like? Ah, yeah, so it is some huge multi-block structure. Looks like it's three by three, so... Huh, that's odd. It looks like you can't choose, like, where you want it to start. Like, where you want it to start tiling. That's so strange looking. There we go. Got some proper ventilation down here. And the more I look at this, the more I think that the floor doesn't really look right. Now that it's brown and everything else is so colorful, it just looks like seriously out of place. But let me see how this type of block looks. It's kind of bluish, so it might sort of match the color palette that I'm going with. Hmm. I don't like how that looks. It's too sharp. I want something more more smooth. What about this? Wow, that's even nastier looking. <laughs> that, it said it was very rusty. They weren't joking. There. I don't know if it really makes much sense, but instead of just replacing the entire floor, I decided to just kind of alternate between the original floor and this new type, which is Rusty Plate. It looks kind of strange, but you know what? I'm going to stick with it. It looks more interesting than it looked before. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, it's, unfortunately it's an even number, so I can't really put a stripe down the center. There is no center. Okay, um, so let's plan out where I want to put these eight thermoelectric generators. Alright, so to fit the eight thermoelectric generators, I had to move this wall back by one block. Um, let's just plop these down, and it'll probably make more sense once I get to work. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Alright, so those are going to go there. And then basically what we're going to have is we need to cut out a plus sign for every single one. And that's where the fluids are going to go. Got them all set up. Yeah, um, a lot of the things I built down here, these strips, don't really matter much anymore because I poked just holes all over the ground. It's also a bit more cramped than I wanted it to be, but it's not too bad. So again, the thermoelectric generator works by generating power based on the difference in temperature between two different sides of the block. So because there's lava on this side of the block and water on this side, it generates a certain amount of power. 
and you can also get more power by doing the same for the other side. So this generates a certain amount of power and then this will generate the same amount of power. So double power by doing that. And I've kind of packed them tight so that multiple thermoelectric generators share the same thing. They share one water or one lava between them just to pack them in tighter. Uh, technically, I believe you can also generate even more power by putting lava and water above and below the block. But if you do that, there's really no easy way to get the power out. I don't even know how you'd get the power out. Because we need to stick connectors on the top of each of these generators. Alright, so let me work on that. Let me work on getting the power out of here. I think I've got everything ready for it. I extended this the size of the shaft here a little bit so I can accommodate the uh, wires that are going to have to go through. So let's plop an LV wire connector on every one of these. And then I think they can all just connect directly to a wire relay. I don't think they have to connect directly to a battery yet. Pretty sure? I don't know, my memory, there's something tickling my memory saying you must connect them to battery, but I don't think you do have to. So let's connect them here. Now I hope they can all reach, let's make sure. Not obstructed, good. Ah, obstructed. In, in what way are you obstructed? Ah, I see. Damn. Okay. In that case, um, I guess I'll put it there. Can this connect? Yeah, okay. Now they'll definitely all be able to connect to it. There we go. Nice little spider web. So now let's put one right here, and I guess right here too. So connect it from down here to here. Okay, and now I think we just connect it to up here. Um, let me make sure this is going to work. So let's see. So we're having, we're still having that weird problem where something is somehow drawing power and all the energy cube and all the batteries are completely empty even though everything is off. So I don't know what's up with that, but if this generates as much power as I think it will, this thing should fill up really fast as soon as I connect this. Oh yeah, look at that. Beautiful. All right, well, I think I just solved our power problem for quite a while. Eight thermoelectric generators should go a long way. Now I think I can make that overclock upgrade for the macerator. So to make the 10k coolant cells that I need to make the overclocker upgrade, I need to make IC2 coolant. For some reason I thought it was just water, but no, IC2 coolant is something special. Which for some reason, as far as I can tell, doesn't show up anywhere in the recipes. I had to search for how to make it online. Uh, but apparently it's made in a fluid solid canning machine from IC2. That plus some lapis lazuli dust. I think. Um, hmm. It's nowhere particularly good to put this, is there? Uh, I guess I'll just put it here. There we go. It's got power. Um, I think we need to set it to... Wait. Oh. Um, fluid enrich, yes, there we go. Okay, fluid enrich. Put those in there. Um, we're missing something. Do we need water? We probably need some water, I'm guessing. I don't think Lapis Lazuli on its own can make a coolant. Probably need some sort of a liquid. It looks like you can use these cells, these like, uh, Fluid cells as basically just buckets. You can pour them out in the world, suck up fluids, things like that. Wow, I've never used this thing and maybe there's a better way to use it, but it seems very fiddly. 
So you need eight lapis and a thousand millibuckets of water to make a thousand millibuckets of IC2 coolant. And from what I could tell, what you need to do is put some source of water up here, flip it to drain from cell into tank, and then to get the right tank I had to flip these, and then switch it to fluid enrich, and then flip these again so that the water was on the left side, and the lapis was here, and then it would make the ICO2 coolant. And then when you want to fill the cells, you gotta go from drain, uh, fill cell from tank. Oh, and then of course, it's <laughs> by default it's on the wrong tank, so you gotta flip it again. Man, I really don't like IC2, it's so fiddly. All these little micro steps just to get something to work. Alright, well these fluid cells should allow me to make two upgrades. Woohoo! It should make stuff go twice as fast. <laughs> it still doesn't work. What's... Let's see. <clears throat> oh, it's not a coolant cell yet. Okay. Oh my god, it's ridiculous! All this micro-crafting. So you have to make a fluid cell with tin item casings and a glass pane. Then you gotta do all that stuff to fill it with coolant. And then you have to cover it in a tin plate to turn it into a cooling cell. <sighs> okay, okay, fine. Oh, I think all my tin's back here. There we go. Ah, right. And tin, you can't do the engineer's hammer. You gotta do it with the forge hammer, which has no durability left. So, I've gotta make a new one. just want to make some overclocker upgrades. Is that so much to ask? How many plates do I need for each one? Four? Four. One. Three. Give me those. Ah, two overclocker upgrades. Thank God. That's all I'm ever crafting. I'm going to move as far away from IC2 machines as possible. Okay. So the point of upgrading the energy system and all that, at least in the super short term, was just to get the macerator working faster so I can get more wheat so I can finish the roof of my storage spot. Of course, in the long term, it's good to have overclocker upgrades and of course it's absolutely good to have a better power system because I'm going to need that for basically everything I make. Plop those in. Okay, well, let's go grab a bunch of bones and see how fast the thing macerates. Do I have any stored up here? Yes, got a whole stack. Heck yeah, it's twice as fast. Still not even that fast. I love it. Let's see how far this 15 gets me. Almost. Let's do a little chisel work here. Kind of make a little room for that wire. Yeah, one unfortunate side, is, side effect of chiseling these things, however, is that um, if you notice, it kind of messes up the pattern of them. It doesn't exactly look horrible, but as soon as you take a bit out like this, it changes a bit. And that's because it kind of, uh, it's, it's basically aware of the blocks around it. So when you put blocks of the same type around it, and if it's set up as this is, then it kind of knows like, hey, I should continue the texture and not have a border. But when you do this, it changes it to a different block type, and then you don't have that anymore. So it reverts to as if 
I guess this was just its own separate piece that didn't have any connecting textures next to it. Or something like that. Oh. Okay, letter. Does not like that. So that's gotta stay the same. Yeah, pretty good looking. Let's put a torch here. I've got 20 more. Is this it? It's complete! Oh my god! I started this like, I don't know, five episodes ago or something? It's finally complete. Could do with a little brightening up. I'll put one in every corner. And maybe some up here too. Yeah. Much better. Alright. I think what I feel like making now is the crusher. Which is kind of ironic, because I'm pretty sure it's going to render the Macerator vastly obsolete. And the kind of roundabout point of everything I was doing in the short term was the overclocker upgrade. <laughs> so, I'm going to render the whole thing obsolete, but whatever. I'm trying to get away from the IC2 machines as much as possible. Um, the Crusher is better in every way, I'm pretty sure. It's cooler, it's faster, it doubles ore more, it works on more ores. Like, this Macerator seems to work on surprisingly few ores. There's quite a few that it just will not process. So let's make the crusher. Um, it's quite a large thing. It's going to take a lot of steel, which I haven't been producing, but um, thankfully I've got about a stack saved up. How much do I have? Um, 42. I, I think that will be enough. It'll probably be enough. Um, but it is going to require a crap ton of iron, which is why I just went mining. Did a ton of mining, it's still processing a bit, but I've got like 12 ingots there, 22 ingots there, 38 ingots there, plus probably about... Probably about two stacks worth of ingots that are coming out of the smeltery. So that should be enough. The only thing though is I need room. The crusher is quite large, and also I think next to the crusher I'm probably going to set up... Not reset up the coke oven and the blast furnace, so I can start making more steel again. So I'm going to create... A brand new area for the crusher and to set those things up again. I'm just trying to think of where. Well, I'm going to leave this power pole here, so I don't think I want to put it here. I mean, I could put it up here. And just leave the power pole there. That could work. Or I can go up another level and put it up here, or I can go off to the side. Um, I'm not sure. I'll get to work. Oh my god! I was building out the platform and a couple Ender Minis came to visit me. Hello! Interesting, this one's vibrating. Is that one okay? It looks like it's aggroed, actually, but not to me. And it's not going anywhere. I know they apparently don't like creepers, so I guess they'll attack creepers on site, but um, there doesn't seem to be any creepers around. There is a zombie. Was that it? Were you annoyed at the zombie? No, I must just be stressed. Ah, I wish I could capture them. Actually, you know what? Before I didn't have my golden lasso to try. I was pretty sure it wouldn't work. But let's make absolutely sure. Let's go grab them. Um, I think they're probably in one of these chests. There they are. Just plot the cows here. Oh, wait, that's right! Oh no! Oh no, I let the cats out! I thought these were cows! I forgot! Oh, okay. Crap. Alright. I'm, I'm gonna tame those cats shortly. And 
Ender Manis. Oh my god. Ah, hostile mob. Yeah, I can't get him. Dang. Hmm. One of these days. I'm pretty sure I looked up what it took to make a soul vial. That's something that I can definitely use to get them. Solarium. Alf glass. Mm, yeah, that's... No, that's not happening. Okay, kitties. Right, um, I need fish. So I need... Let's do this quick before... I mean, I don't know if they're going to run away or despawn. I don't think so, but... Um, we need a fishing pole to get fish, and then we can use that to transform them. What's a fishing pole need? String and stick, I think. Oh, I got special flux-infused ones. Well, anyway, that's not happening. Hold on, kitties. And now we wait. Okay, I got two raw fish. Let's see if I can go get the kitties. So you need to sneak up to them nice and slow. If you go too fast, they'll be scared away. Also, judging by the mini map, I think maybe one despawned or something? I don't see it anymore. Oh no, oh no, no. Come back. Come back, little kitty. No, don't jump on that. You might get hurt back there. Okay, I think I just need to stay still, and I think it'll come to me. Hopefully it can get back out from back there. I think it can. That didn't work. Boop. That didn't work. It just ate both of the fish. Oh no, it's not guaranteed. It's not guaranteed. I need to go get more fish. Okay, I've got four more raw fish. And I just slept. Uh, I don't see the cat on the minimap anymore, but I hope it's still back here. Oh no. Oh, I think they may be both despawned. Just run around a bit, take a look at the mini-map. It's not looking good unless they wandered off pretty far. Try this way. Yeah, they're gone. It's alright. I'll get them back in the future. Just a quick little experiment. I want to see just how big the dark oak saplings turn into. Like, are they going to get as big as these trees are? And I think they need to be in a 2x2 two two pattern like this. Let's see. Oh, no, they don't need to be in a 2x2 two two pattern. And, yeah, they do end up just as tall. Cool. So I could always replant trees if I need to, if there's another fire or something like that. Yeah, it looks like it uses up two. Neat. Anyway, back to this. Where was I? Um, yeah, putting down a platform, I'm trying a different texture. And I think I need to go mining for cobblestone, because I think I used up every single bit of cobblestone I have. There we go. I'll do some chiseling bits work on it later. Yeah, this... For some reason, I can't walk up this. I get stuck right here, so definitely a lot of work to do on that later. There we go. Coke oven. Bloop. Blast oven. Or blast furnace. Bloop. So, remember this whole process of both of these working. 
is very slow, so I'm just gonna pack it full of of um coal to process and also iron. Although, actually, I don't think I can process any iron because I don't think I have any coal coke left over. I think I used it all. I'll take a look, see if I have any left over. No, it doesn't look like it. All right, so I believe it's actually uh, actually a little bit more efficient to both produce coal coke in the form of blocks of coal instead of individual coal pieces, and also to smelt blocks of iron instead of individual iron ingots. I don't think it's a huge difference, but it's a little bit of a difference. Significant enough to be worth it, I think. It is going to take a very, very long time to do this. That's the blast furnace. No wonder it doesn't work. <laughs> this goes in there. Yeah, so it's going to take a long time. You can see it just got to 1%. It was slow enough with just individual coal pieces. So it's going to take a sweet time. But should be in the end a little bit faster. On average. Okay, um, I think there will be enough room for the crusher right here. Uh, it might be a little bit tight. We'll see. I could always extend this if I have to. I see you. I love the kickback on this sword. Another one? Oh! Furious child. Jumping in the bushes to taunt me. Yeah, it seems like all uh, entities don't seem to know what to do when it comes to pathfinding with these gardens from Pam's Harvest Craft. They kind of just get stuck in them. Anyway, I'm going to go prep the stuff for the crusher. Alright, I think I've got everything prepped to make for the crusher. It actually wasn't too bad. I mean, it uses quite a bit of resources, but there wasn't a lot of micro-crafting, so it came together pretty fast. Uh, I'm basing this off of the book. It shows you how to make the crusher a big multi-block structure, and if you mouse over this, it tells you exactly how many of each block you need. So, first one, I need 10 scaffolding. Or, yeah, 10 steel scaffolding. Of course, you can't always make the exact number you want, so sometimes you have to make a little bit more. And the rest of the engineering block, that's sort of like the core, the, the brains of the operation. Oh, and that used, by the way, what was it? Quartz. Uh, this? Red quartz? Which looked like it might be hard to make, but it's just nether quartz and then redstone. So, super easy. Um, I need 10 light engineering blocks, a bunch of iron mechanical components, iron ingots, and copper. And iron mechanical components themselves are just iron and copper, so it's just a bunch of iron and copper. I need a bunch of steel fences, just a bunch of steel. And finally, one of the reasons I needed so much iron is because I need to make nine hoppers. Which is a bunch of iron and chests. Okay. Let's put this thing together. It's always so satisfying to put every little piece just in its proper place and then bang it with a hammer and then it turns into a big multi-block structure. Alright, so let's see. Uh, stop this. I think I can... There's some way to make it go to, like, just the first... Yeah, there we go. Just the first level. So we got a bunch of scaffolding and then light engineering blocks. One, two, three, four, five. So it's five by three. Let's see if I can remember that. I probably can't. And this is a light engineering block. And then this. And then this. Right. Yes. And then next layer, this builds up with more light engineering blocks. Now we've got basically a square of fence. Then we've got a couple more light engineering blocks. So this is light engineering block and that's a light engineering block. And we've got a fence surrounding this. 
And I believe the redstone engineering block goes right on the end here. Yes. Okay, and then we just put a bunch of hoppers on top of this whole fence thing here. Oh, I think that's it. Let's go sleep real quick before I bang it. And... Wham! Didn't work. No, it worked. Okay. <laughs> Sometimes you don't really know which one to hit often. You just kind of hit them all and it finally works. Yeah, I got a freaking crusher. Look at that thing. It's beautiful. Black spike. So the power connects right here. And whatever you want to crush, you just throw in the top. Quite literally. Literally, you can just drop items directly in the top and it'll crush them up. And if you step in here, it'll also hurt you and try to crush you up. It's quite fun. Um, so let's get this thing power, huh? Let's see, do I have the stuff for it? Got the core- Whoa! Oh, Christ. <clears throat> got that, got that. I need a relay. Yes, it'll be wire connector. Okay, we can hook this thing up. I'm not sure how much power it takes when it's running full stop, so I don't know if the low voltage wires and connectors that I have right now will be able to actually supply it well enough. I guess we'll see. At some point, I'm going to have to upgrade to medium voltage or high voltage wires. So where's the... Yeah, so the nearest one's over here, so I'm going to have to put down both poles, definitely, to get the RF. Connect from there. Looks like right about here. Come on. Come on. I prefer if these wires didn't overlap, but I guess there's not much I can do about it. Tree's kind of in the way. I think I could put it right here. That might work. Okay, that works there, but is it going to be able to connect to that is the question. It might be too far away. Oh no, it's not too far away, but it's obstructed. Dang. Just made a bunch more posts. Alright. Let's go from there to... I guess like here. It's still not going to be able to reach it, so I'm going to have to kind of go... Uh, go around the back. From there to here, and we have power. Look at that, filling up. I'm gonna grind myself. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, look at the power by the way. It looks like the low voltage is actually not able to supply it. It's going down. It's actually like seriously not able to supply it. It's going down very fast. Okay, so long term, I am definitely gonna have to upgrade not my not my power generation system. I'm sure my power generation system's just fine. Um, the problem is that it's putting out so much actually that I don't think these low voltage wires can even handle it. Assuming the numbers haven't been changed in this mod pack, I think that each thermoelectric generator of which I have eight, each one I think will put out 80 RF with the setup that I currently have. 
and low voltage wire um, does it say uh, it doesn't say here but I'm pretty sure it transports 256 RF per tick and they're generating 80 RF per tick each and there's eight of them so a lot of the power is actually just being wasted so the issue is not my power generation but my power transportation system But who cares? We got a freaking crusher. All right, so let me show you how this thing works. Um, I guess just for simplicity's sake, so it doesn't just spout things out that it crushes directly into the air. I'll put a chest here. It should output it into it. Now we should be able to crush a whole bunch of things. I'm pretty sure almost all the ores I have. Um, like, for example, the... I don't have it on me, but... The uh, bauxite, which becomes aluminum. The, uh, the macerator can't even touch that. There it is. Take a couple of that. Yeah, you can't even put the bauxite in the macerator. But you should be able to put it in this thing. And don't worry, I'll create a system so you don't have to actually run up here and toss it in. There it goes. Oh wow, it actually spins when you throw something in, but it didn't spin when I went in it. Look at how fast it is. So much faster than the macerator. And yes, this also gives you something very important that I don't think you can really get any other way. And it mentions it in the flowchart that you actually need the crusher because there's a there's a small chance when you crush certain things that you get a byproduct. In this case, small chance of getting titanium. Uh, bauxite. I think it says what the chance is, right? Uses? Crusher. Mm, okay, it actually doesn't say what the chance is. But yeah, it tells you what the byproduct will be. So you can put pretty much anything you want there. I'm pretty sure it also is a vastly more effective way of getting coal from coal ore. I think it gives you, like... Yeah, you get four coal from every coal ore. Way better. I think I've got some coal just waiting... Uh, here? I think from nether coal ore, I think I smelted it and turned it into... Yeah, turned it into normal coal ore. So this is going to turn into like three stacks of coal. I already love this thing. There it goes. It's beautiful. Huh. How strange. It's actually not chewing through power nearly as fast as it was when I was sitting in it. Does the power it consumes... Is the power it consumes dependent on what you put in it? Oh. I guess there's like... I don't know. Maybe a... A penalty or something when you stand in it. Yeah, it takes way more power when I stand in it. It's actually not bad. Yeah, I don't think I actually need to upgrade my power system to get this to work, unless I intend to use it constantly for a very long period of time. <laughs> Look, I've already got more than a stack of coal. Alright, let me make a little system for getting stuff into it easily. Alright, so Immersive Engineering has these really cool conveyor belts. So I'm thinking, what if I make a conveyor belt system that takes stuff from a chest, uh, I'm pretty sure they will extract from a chest, and just transports it above the crusher, and then just drops it straight in. I think that'd be a pretty cool kind of immersive thing. Um, let me just make sure this does do what I think it's going to do. Whoop. Oh, get me off. Let me make sure this will drop something. Like if it's... Whoop. I don't know if that's pointing the right way, the one on the end. I wonder if it's hovering over something, will the items drop? Ugh. It really, it like, sucks you into the center. I think I can rotate it. Whoa, what? There we go. So, if I put something in a chest here, like redstone, will it take it out of it? No. I thought it did. Hmm. 
Okay, well, I don't think that's that big of a deal. I think I can probably just put a transfer note. Oh, I guess I would need the pipes too, huh? Okay, that works. And will they fall? Yeah, they fall down. I wish I didn't need the transfer node, though. It looks really kind of dumb. I mean, I guess it doesn't look any more dumb than the item just magically coming out of a chest, right? Okay, yeah, that's fine. Let's give this thing a test. It's looking pretty cool. So it comes from here. Goes off to the side, goes up here. And right over into the crusher. Alright, let's test it out on some redstone ore. There it goes. Uh, look at it go! <laughs> that is so cool! Look at that! Oh my god, I love it. That is the coolest thing. God, it's so efficient too at uh, redstone ore. If you look at it, for each one you get six redstone and also the possibility of cinnabar as a byproduct. Oh, there's some cinnabar right now. I don't even know what that's used for. Man infused ingot, platinum ingot, tin ingot. Uh, I think it's used in making blazing pyrothium too. Which is basically a super, super, super hot substance, even hotter than lava. And by the way, it is actually possible to um, increase the efficiency of that, the thermoelectric generators that I've got down there, because it is based on the difference in the temperature. If you get something colder than water, such as gelid cryothium, uh, and or something hotter than lava, such as blazing pyrothium, then it'll generate even more power. But yeah, I'm so freaking happy this thing works. And it looks so cool. Beautiful. Beautiful. Okay, I'm going to do a little bit of kind of chiseling bits cleanup work to make this look a bit better. Okay, I did some very, very minor chiseling bits work. Mostly I just fix the stairs so you don't get stuck on them anymore. And then also put a little bit of detail into the feet. Just so they look a little bit different from the rest of it. I was going to do a lot more, like, smooth this whole section out. Cut a, cut a half a cube off of this to smooth it out, but then I realized when I got here, I could either stop here, which looks weird, or keep going, but then the conveyor belt's kind of hanging over the edge a little bit, which also looks weird. So I decided just to not do it. But I did do it in the back here. And, um, I also thought, what if I used scaffolding to support the conveyor belt instead of stone? And I think it actually looks better. I like how it looks more. Yeah, I wish this wasn't just, like, totally over the edge. It looks like it ha should have some sort of support, but I'm um, not really sure what to do for that. I mean, I could put just a scaffolding block right here, but does that really look much better? Kind of looks like it's in the machine. Then again, though, you're going to be down here. You're not going to see it. You can see that there is something supporting it, but you can't see the bottom of it and just how close it is. Actually, you know what? I think that's fine. Yeah, that's perfectly fine. Alright, well, I think this is a pretty good place to end the episode. I am incredibly happy with this crusher. I love it. So, I hope you've enjoyed so far. And when I return, I have no idea what I'm going to work on, but I'm sure it'll be fun. <laughs>